Coming to you from the Wood Sailing Pavilion at MIT, my name is Marsha Bolton and this is ZigZag. The summer break is winding down and the class of 2010 will soon be arriving on campus. But there's still plenty of time to enjoy the New England weather with a trip to the beach or a sail on the Charles. The summer is also a time when MIT hosts students from the local community and from around the world in pursuit of challenging educational opportunities. Building exotic alternative fuel vehicles, playing Quidditch with underwater ROVs, and doing graduate level research as an undergrad are just some of the answers you'll find here to the age old question, what do you do on your summer vacation? For one international group, the summer of 2006 provided an opportunity to make a real difference as they gathered at MIT for the Vehicle Design Summit, an event conceived and organized by students. The Vehicle Design Summit uh, consists of students from 13 countries, about 20 universities. We had four vehicle teams that each designed and built from scratch a complete vehicle that carried either one or two passengers and would really make a positive impact on the issue of commuter commuter travel. We're doing a ground up reanalysis of everything you find in a car. We're trying to build a two-seater uh, commuter car. I, I really enjoyed designing things and this thing, this, uh, this event is really full of design. This isn't, you know, it's not for fun. It's not for a competition that ends and we're done. We are trying to do something very real, very serious and have an impact on the world right now. One of the cars we made, the AHPV, assisted human-powered vehicle. So maybe if, if they're part of the power source, if they need to pedal in order to move the car, in addition to having a battery pack and an electric motor, that was, that was kind of the key tenet. We also made a biofuels car, and that team was very interested in how do you run a car in vegetable oil, uh, SVO, or straight vegetable oil. It has four wheels and two passengers, and they made a steel space frame. We also made a fuel cell electric hybrid. It's, it's predominantly an electric three-wheeled electric with two passengers, and our other car is called Pulse, meaning it was supposed to be the pulse of the city, kind of a commuter concept that just has one person, and was just to show, here's what, if you were commuting by yourself, here's what your car might look like if it was all electric. <laughs> the biggest priorities of our work are to get students together and show that really passionate people can do a lot and that an issue like global warming is really not ephemeral even though it's in many different realms and many different markets there are ways of kind of chipping away at it little by little. If you've spent any time around MIT this summer you've probably noticed crowds of students a little younger than your average undergrad. They're participants in the School of Engineering's Engineering Outreach Programs. The Office of Engineering Outreach Programs currently has three major programs in the office. Uh, the first and the flagship program, which has been around the longest, is the MIT Minority Introduction to Engineering and Sciences, or the MITES program. Typically we bring about 60 to 80 students to campus from across the country, and they study what is a, a mini freshman experience for about six weeks of courses in life sciences, engineering design, internet programming, genomics, calculus, physics, and humanities. The second program is a SEED Academy, Saturday Engineering Enrichment and Discovery. We keep the kids for three and a half years and they basically spend 10 Saturdays a semester with us doing hands-on kinesthetic learning in engineering disciplines. And the third program, which is the newest, is the uh, Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics program, that's STEM. That program is for middle school students. We enrich their middle school experience by teaching them advanced topics things like algebraic topology, descriptive geometry, physics, probability and statistics and programming in a five week intensive program during the summer. The best part about STEM was meeting new people and learning about more stuff because it actually stretched our brains. These programs are important because A, you get students to come together and see that there are other students like them that love to ask the same probing questions and have a fire, a passion in the belly for, 
for science and technology. And two, it helps us to teach students to ask the why questions. And that's what we need more of in this country. For some of this year's MITE students, the summer ended with a splash as they participated in the first ever MITE's Underwater Remotely Operated Vehicle, or ROV, competition. This way, this way, this way, that way, swim that way. Today we had these kids show off their five weeks of work and what they had to do was build an underwater machine uh, called an ROV and we had them do three types of competitions today. They did a quick drag race, a weightlifting competition and finally we had a Quidditch match underwater. We won the competition, we came in first place overall based on the fact that we performed like highest in all the three competitions um, but yeah this is our beautiful machine. Cardinal. In this class, I'm trying to have them ask the questions, to have them be the ones observing something and ask the questions about it. So I'm really trying to get them to be actively the ones driving what we're doing, where they can really just get involved, get immersed uh, in it. You know, there's a tradition here at MIT that before any major challenge that uh, the students get dunked, they get thrown into the motor, the pool, or the shower. And I heard a rumor that uh, the winning team stepped up to that challenge and threw the teaching assistant in the pool. I don't know if it's true or, true or not, but if it is, it's very much in line with the MIT tradition. of episodes back, we met the students from MIT's Summer Research Program, or MSRP, as they were beginning their nine-week stay on campus. It's been an intense couple of months for these 57 undergraduates from around the country. They've taken on projects in diverse topics such as robotics, nuclear engineering, materials science, and design, and their graduate-level work has resulted in seven likely publications. But they've also managed to enjoy trips to Woods Hole and Martha's Vineyard. And at the final celebration, they received a surprise visit from Randall Pinkett, winner of last season's Apprentice and an MIT PhD. Having been through MIT and knowing the MSRP program, first of all, let me congratulate you. It's a great time to be involved. It's a great time for you finishing up. So hopefully you enjoy this, enjoy the day, celebrate your accomplishments, and recharge your batteries for the fall semester. This program has definitely changed my thoughts about the future. When I came in here, I had a set path, but now things just kind of got changed, but for the good, for the better, definitely. So I have more direction now. It seems certain that we'll be hearing from these outstanding students again as they continue to pursue careers and break new ground in science and technology. That's all for now. For ZigZag, I'm Marsha Bolton. I'll see you next time.